Are you working from home? Does it feel like you're always trying to juggle a video camera, a pressure cooker, an hourglass, and a bag of almonds? You didn't think I was actually going to try to juggle that, did you? That would be a disaster. No, we're not, but we are going to use these four items in this video for something I, I think much more important than just juggling. I'm Dr. Bradford Cooper of the Catalyst Coaching Institute, where we help current and future health and wellness coaches move toward better than yesterday. And today I'm going to give you the four secrets to making the most of working from home. Now, obviously this is a big topic for those of us who are health and wellness coaches, but I have a feeling this one will apply to a lot more of us at this point in time. Susanna and I have been primarily working out of our home since we launched our company back in 2007. Our kids at the time were 8, 10, and 12 years old. So we admittedly were not in the toddler stage that many of you may be facing, but I will be including kids within the mix of this discussion. So number one, think of the video camera. Perspective. If you have kids at home, interruptions are a guarantee. But even if you're flying solo, there are likely times during the day when you're going to be unable to be fully focused or maybe even partially focused for that matter. And that's okay. The key is to think about your day as a total package. The average commute time in the US is approximately 30 minutes each way. Add prep time, lunch time, parking, and other preparatory elements. And the average person is looking at 90 minutes to two hours minimum of time that's committed to non-working pieces of the puzzle. 90 minutes to two hours minimum. That means if you're working from home, even if your day starts at the same time as usual, you're 20 to 25% ahead of schedule right out of the gate. That's like running a 10K, but knowing they're not gonna start the clock until you're well past the first mile marker. So with that in mind, when interruptions do occur, and they will, whether they involve children, pets, roommates, or other miscellaneous unexpecteds, you're already so far ahead that they really are not impacting the bigger picture. Until those interruptions exceed the 90 minute plus mark, you're still well ahead of pace. Number two is the pressure plan or the pressure cooker. When we first launched our company, we lived in a smaller house and the table from which I was working, well, it was a few feet from the kitchen and a few yards from the main family room where the kids gathered and played with their friends. Much of my role, as with any company early on, was communicating with clients or potential clients over the phone. The year we launched was the same year the iPhone was released and we were still on dial-up internet, if that gives you any idea. As we're taping this video, our kids are now 25, 23, and 21, and all three will be married by this time next year. But I can promise you, if you were to get anywhere near them and yell the word, phone, they would immediately grab the dog, mute the TV, and silence their friends. Yes, we were very fortunate to have great kids who understood the room had to be quiet when a call came through for daddy. And had this been a constant in my work life, that strategy obviously wouldn't have worked. But the key to this is to work together with your family or your roommates to ensure everyone is on the same page during those, well, potentially make or break moments in the day. The advanced planning bolsters cooperation and your likelihood of success. Number three, think of the hourglass. Know yourself. Most likely, you fall on one end of the spectrum or the other in terms of the work-life balance teeter-totter. If focus is your superpower, then your challenge is turning work off when it's time to shut down the computer or your work day. On the other hand, if you're a little less engaged with your work, you may find Netflix, Sports Center, social media, or laundry to be a constantly disruptive voice calling for your attention. Either way, set up strategies to address the potential downside. If you can't shut it down, work-wise, then set parameters in place around when you'll check email or schedule meetings and calls. For me, that means a hard stop at 6 p.m., including phone calls. But your plan may be completely different. If non-work aspects keep vying for your attention, use parameters in the opposite manner. Download one of those free apps that tracks the time you spend on social media, or go old school and pick up an hourglass, like I mentioned. You flip it over and then focus in until it runs out and earn yourself a short break. You know yourself. The key is to reflect on your personal pattern and, and then put that self-knowledge into practice. Number four, food. Think of the almonds. Food, food is a very significant issue for those working from home. Yes, the office often brings morning donuts and leftover birthday cake in the break room temptations. But with the added interest that all of us, employers included, have in health and wellness, these are kind of becoming things of the past. The reality is the office can provide us with a 10 to 12 hour bubble away from the temptations that we often keep far too handy in our homes. And thus, the problem provides a solution. 
If working from home, make a habit of only eating desserts outside the house. Sure, go out for ice cream. Pick up some cookies to go with dinner tonight. But keep the ongoing storage of these items out of the house, if that's a personal struggle. The other half of the solution is to make positive choices easy. Every single afternoon, I have a handful of almonds and a square of 90% dark chocolate. We keep them in the house, so they're always very readily available, and the habit is, it's, it's routine, it's locked in. This not only makes the healthy option the easy option, but by purposely planning this routine for every afternoon, it heads off the temptation for other, less healthy options, even before they surface. You want a bonus suggestion? I've got you covered, hang on for just a second. By the way, you can always reach out to us, access a number of free resources via the website, see that link below. And we have a whole series of videos on the business of coaching on this channel, including this one. If you click the subscribe button below, you'll have easy access to everything. Okay, your bonus tip, an accountability partner. Whether that's your health and wellness coach or a friend, having someone to check in with every once in a while can work wonders when it comes to making the most of your home work. Thanks for joining us. This is Dr. Bradford Cooper of the Catalyst Coaching Institute signing out. I look forward to seeing you on a future YouTube coaching channel video or maybe touching base over on the Catalyst Health, Wellness and Performance Coaching Podcast. Take care.